What's up guys, this is Andrew with Motorcycles Off-Road. Now man, it is cold. Where I live, it is very cold right now and I wanna get out and ride, but I hate the cold temperature. Today it was like 25 degrees. Here in Northeast US, we had a couple days of good riding and then it went right back to cold again. So I hope you guys don't mind, we have another discussion video for today. And today's video is something I wanted to cover a while back and I just kept pushing it down the road. And that is, who is the Honda 300L for? What kind of rider is it for? Who would benefit from owning this motorcycle? Now I think primarily beginners all the way up to intermediate can have a great time and a lot of fun with this motorcycle, but there's also hidden benefits to having this motorcycle as well. I'm talking about the commuter, the person on a budget, somebody who wants to go moto camping, or even in my case and scenario, which I'll talk about lastly, is if you need a legal off-road vehicle. So I want to open this discussion up to you guys. Let me know how experienced you are if you have a Honda 300L or if you want one and what exactly you want to use the motorcycle for. And I'm going to try to break down my points of view for who I think should buy this bike. Number one, of course, I mentioned would be beginners. Now, yes, you can mod this bike and make it very good for intermediate and you could do basically anything for it. But for a beginner, there's a couple key points with this motorcycle that really fall into place. Number one, I would say the lower seat height than a lot of the most aggressive bikes out there. If you're a kind of beginner or you're maybe like I'm 5 foot 10, that's not short but it's also not really tall, this is a good bike for you. When its seat height is sitting at 35 inches, it's not quite as tall as some of the 37, 39 inch bikes out there. And if you're trying to build up confidence, a good way to do it would be get a bike that you feel more stable on. The Honda 300L offers that. And for me, it was a transition from my DR350S, which also had a similar well actually the exact seat height as this particular motorcycle so it was seamless like for me the dr350s was my favorite motorcycle and the honda 300l the comparisons are like uncanny there's so many things that these motorcycles have in common and i felt that Suzuki's deviation from the 350S to the DRZ400 wasn't exactly for me. It's a great bike and I love it, but the Honda 300L I feel is a better bike. So when it comes back down to beginners, that's the bike I learned on. Like mine was like a 98. It's a bike you can always go back to and it would always be reliable. So for a beginner, I think that seat height and that six speed transmission really lends itself well. Next, the Honda 300L offers fuel injection. I know a lot of people say, you know, fuel injection is not that great or whatever. I think it is. And I think for a couple reasons. One, because the power difference. So you have a linear power range. When you pull the throttle, it's instant, but it gradually gives you that push, that push behind you and you feel it as you start to like pull away from the handlebars. Whereas something that is carbureted, an older motorcycle, you can crank the throttle and then you have a delay i don't even know if it's a full second let's say 0.8 seconds to like 1.2 seconds as if you don't know how the carburetor works you're opening a gate and air is forcing into the engine because basically an engine is a big vacuum so when you do that you're just sucking more fuel right up through this tiny little jet so what tends to happen is you have a little bit of delay and so you think you're okay you think you're okay and all of a sudden poof, there's all the power so for a beginner sometimes that's a little bit harder to manage whereas the 300l is not going to do that to you now other things to mention with fuel injection is you can get a tune and mod out any kind of issues that you have in certain rev ranges. Let's say you feel like the throttle's a little too jerky and low RPMs. You can tune that out. That was a particular thing with my SV650. A lot of people don't recommend that as a beginner bike for people because it's jerky and low RPMs, particularly going low speed in first and second gear. Now, of course, I just threw a power commander on there and adjusted the values and that was gone. So fuel injection definitely has its value when it comes to beginners or intermediate riders. Next, the slipper clutch. The slipper clutch is really great on this bike. Uh, I don't know if I want to ride an off-road bike without one, to be honest, because it kind of spoils you, right? You don't really have to pay attention as much. You can kind of be a little more reckless with the clutch, and you can also do really aggressive downshifts. And if you rode bikes for a while, you know that sometimes you really need to stop, and you downshift too aggressively, and you feel the back tire lock up because the transmission just seized up because you did it at the wrong RPM. Well, that kind of doesn't happen. Happen. What happens with the slipper clutch is it engine brakes you and seamlessly transitions into that stop rather than an abrupt lock up your back tire. Now you're also contending with that along with trying to be evasive to what's in front of you because you aggressively downshift in the first place. So that's something to think about. And then also the bike is very well balanced. I know so many people complained about the weight. I did multiple videos of the weight. I mean, heck, I even lift this bike up with a forklift to get its weight. And 
it's really not an issue because of the way the bike is designed and how manufacturers are able to use programs and just put weight in certain areas to make the ergonomics just better. This bike is very confidence inspiring and seamless. So the weight is very good on this motorcycle. The next person I think would really benefit from this motorcycle is the commuter. And one big thing is service intervals. Now I've talked about service intervals multiple times on my videos and it just stands true that the service intervals on this motorcycle are great. I mean, you could ride it for a whole season without having to do anything. I mean, obviously chain maintenance, that's always going to be a thing. You know, your basic checks, but oil changes once every 8,000 miles. I mean, most people will never see that in a season. And then you're going to change the oil the next year anyway, because you want to change it once a year or 8,000 thousand miles and they tell you you don't even have to change your filter when you change the oil it's every other time which i think that's crazy just just change your filter it's a couple of dollar item but when you look at valves and everything like that you're not going to have to do that for a while i mean granted i mostly used my 300l for off-road but there's no way i could put 8,000 miles on it in one season it's just impossible next for a commuter the insurance now i don't know how this works for a lot of different countries and a lot of different people and how they are but i can speak for where i'm at and how it kind of works around me is when you have a motorcycle that its displacement is low the insurance companies don't see you as a risk at all so for me personally i have this spike and the tenere and i pay 70 dollars a year for insurance a year now to put that in perspective i pay about the same amount for a month for my pickup truck so you're talking a year for two motorcycles versus a car for one single month. So for a commuter, it's advantageous to have the 300L as a backup vehicle. Now that kind of goes hand in hand with someone on a budget. So a commuter and the budget situation, I would say number three would be the budget person. But gas prices are a big thing. So I know everywhere in the world, fuel prices are becoming more and more. And I know some people try to remedy it with electric cars, which is also expensive and pollutes the world. And that's a whole nother discussion in its own way. I mean, me personally, I'm in industrial radiographer i'm an inspector i work in chemical plants coal plants nuclear power plants amusement park rides all that so i see these things but all that argument off the table as far as motorcycles go for this bike is amazing you're getting above 70 miles per gallon so if you do decide to be a commuter or if you're somebody on a budget this is just great every single time you choose to suit up put your helmet on fire up the 300l and take that to work instead of your truck or your car or whatever you are saving money it's just more money in your bank account no matter how you look at it because if you were going to go there anyway and use such a fuel efficient vehicle as the 300l then you're saving money also the person on a budget total cost if you're really looking to get a new motorcycle or you're looking to step into dual sport world this is a great bike to do it i mean financing for some people isn't everything but even if you had bad credit and you go get a personal loan Usually interest rates on personal loans is somewhere around 7 to 14% and you put $1,500 down on this motorcycle. Once again, speaking for my area, the US, uh, your monthly payments are small. You're looking $80 a month. That's $20 a week. A lot of people can afford that. And if you are really tight on the budget, there's certain things you can cut because $20 a week is very easy to achieve. Basically, without going too far into the weeds, I'm trying to say that this motorcycle is very inexpensive compared to a lot of other things on the market. And I get there's freight fees and dealer fees. And based on your area, it's going to be different. And of course, the exchange rate. But all things considered, you're getting a brand new zero mile vehicle that will last you a very long time because you know no one else has beaten it has neglected it has left it in the rain you own this vehicle from day one and you're paying a very reasonable price for it so number four the person that I think would benefit from this motorcycle is of course someone who's moto camping now you could get away with the 300l or the rally in this situation I would think the rally is more geared towards the commuter and the moto camper I did a whole entire video which I think the best two dual sports for moto camping are the 300l rally and the DRZ 400 and how to set these bikes up to do such and break Breaking down the miles and the range and everything you can check that video out but even the base 300l model is good at this i mean you can crank your preload all the way up load it down with some soft bags it makes some great kits for this bike i have some listed in my amazon store which i'll put in the first comment below and particularly to rally this thing is ready to go out of the box you're ready to start your adventures and i can do a whole video if you guys want about very inexpensive gear to get you out there motor camping and having a good time and stuff that i would recommend because it doesn't have to be $500 tents like you see some of these guys in. You don't need super expensive sleeping bags, especially if it's a nice climate. So there's ways to do it. And this motorcycle is very good for it. 
And lastly, the person that I think will really benefit from this motorcycle is somebody who needs to be legal and go off-road. And that is where I fall into play. Now I'm going to get a 300 rally and I'm going to use that for moto camping just for adventures and stuff. I do have my Tenere, but when it comes to riding in the areas that I live, I need a street legal plated vehicle and that I can ride all these wonderful trails and roads and abandoned ghost towns that are in my area. There's tons of places to go. There's tons of places to ride, but here your bike just needs to be legal. I mean, sure, I could have a lot of fun with something really geared for off-road that's lighter that just rips through everything, but that's not really what I'm interested in. I'm interested in exploring, riding dual sports in both scenarios, and having a dual sport opens up a giant world of new areas for me and for many people. Like, you are very limited when you just have an off-road vehicle, and then you have to cart it to the place, and you don't want to drive it very far. Then you have your service interval problems. So, with this motorcycle, what I particularly like to do is I put it on the back of my truck, I take my family out camping, and then I go out riding. I just leave when I went. Or if I want to go to the store real quick, I just throw in a book bag, go to the little country store, I grab what we need, I come right back. It's just really nice. Or the bathrooms, they're on the other side of the campground. I just jump on the motorcycle, ride over there, get to the bathrooms. So having a street legal off-road bike is something that a lot of people are looking for. And I think this motorcycle checks all the boxes. It certainly does for me. Well, guys, it's supposed to get warmer. I'm going to be out more. I want to do some adventures on my Tenere 700. I'm definitely going to do a ton of riding on my Honda 300L. And as I said, I have a rally on reserve. So when that comes in, I'll be able to experiment with that bike. I'll be able to build these two bikes completely different and compare them side by side. And I'll try to do the best I can to bring you guys the most informative and entertaining content that I'm capable of. So I hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Andrew. This is Motorcycles Off-Road. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're new here, sub. I got more stuff coming. Stay safe out there.